Hey there, my name is GameEnjoyer69, and I'm here to tell you why your opinion is wrong. But before I say anything of actual value, I'd like to first start out by letting you know that I've put over 12,000 hours into Orc Slayer 4, Dawn of the Night. Therefore, I know infinitely more than you do with your puny 50 hours on the game. What are you, a casual? Basically, my opinion already matters more than yours does. Anyway, now that I've gotten that out of the way, here's why the Thick Club is objectively the best we- Has this ever happened to you? You give your opinion on a video game, and someone disagrees with you. Classic internet stuff. But unfortunately for you, you're not arguing with a mere mortal. You're about to start a comment war with a professional, alpha-level gamer. That's Gamer with a capital A, and that A stands for the abuse he regularly inflicts on his keyboard when he loses a game of League. You might think your argument is stronger than his, but that's just because you haven't seen his secret weapon. Look at how big that number is. This guy's playtime is a whole five figures. Way more impressive than your tiny two-digit excuse for a number. That's kind of small. Clearly the massive experience this guy is putting on full display means that his opinion simply matters more than yours. Feel free to delete your Steam account if you thought you could have an opinion, peasant. Experience is valuable. A mechanic that's fixed a thousand cars is likely better at their job than a mechanic that's fixed ten cars. There are exceptions, of course, prodigies that excel at a given task incredibly early in their development, but these people are the exception and not the rule. Generally speaking, more experience means more skill. But when it comes to video games, this idea has been twisted and malformed into an entirely separate belief. The idea that more time equals more understanding. People will often assert that their opinion has more inherent value simply because of the amount of time they've invested into a given game. Mentioning how many hours you have on a game before giving your opinion on it has become something of a cheat code. A trick that YouTubers and community figures use to convince you of their opinion without having to do anything to substantiate it. I'm here to put an end to this idea, to prove once and for all that having a lot of hours in a game does not automatically make your opinion on the game more valuable, and hopefully to get everyone to shut up about their playtime, because at the end of the day, it doesn't actually matter. <laughs> A lot of people seem to think that the size of a person's playtime is a direct indication of a person's understanding and credibility. That if they have an absurdly high amount of time dedicated to a given game, it necessarily means that they are an educated source of valid and well-substantiated opinions regarding said game. These guys like know right where I'm at! Basically, a high hour count is seen as a person's gaming IQ, a number to denote how much of an intellectual someone is when it comes to their game of choice. The issue with this is much like the issues with using IQ to measure intelligence in the real world. The number itself doesn't indicate anything about how a person achieved it. In simple terms, the number doesn't tell the full story. For example, let's say our good friend GameEnjoyer69 over here claims to have 12,000 hours in Orc Slayer. But what was he doing during those 12,000 hours? Was he meticulously analyzing the game for its flaws in hopes of doing an absurdly long video essay about it? Or was he playing it casually, without paying much attention? Maybe he left it idling in the background of his computer while he went on vacation for a month. Nothing about the number on its own tells me any of this. Therefore, citing the number as an indication of experience or knowledge is inherently flawed, because we don't know what was being done during that time. To illustrate my point further, you and me are arguing about a game called, oh, I don't know, Overfortress Watch 2. I say that Pyro is really underpowered when compared to a character like Widowmaker, because he can't do very much at longer ranges. But you then say that I only think that because I'm bad at Pyro, and that once I play the game as much as you have, I'll come around to the idea that Pyro isn't underpowered at all. You then whip out your big, fat, sizable playtime to absolutely dwarf my relative lack of experience and further prove your point. Though it might seem like you're a much more reasonable and trustworthy player since you have more playtime than me, the reality could be that I've spent all my time in the game playing Pyro, and you've never played the class once. For all I know, you've only ever played Widowmaker, so you're inherently biased against me in the first place. These are the nuances that never get explored when you reduce an argument down to you don't know what you're talking about, and I do, because I've played the game more than you. But my IQ is only 159. Maggie's more intelligent than me? That's right, because 167 is a bigger number than 159. Do you see how that works? 
This becomes even more convoluted when you learn that they are actually people artificially inflating their playtime, using idling servers to make it seem like they have more experience than they really do. And I'd wager the reason why this is even happening is because gamers put such an emphasis on playtime as the end-all be-all metric for game experience, when it doesn't really indicate anything. But let's go one step further. Let's say Game Enjoyer 69's playtime has been entirely legitimate, and he's earned all of those hours by actually playing the game. Believe it or not, that still doesn't make his opinion any more valuable than someone who's played the game less than he has. In fact, I'd actually argue that players with a massive playtime are more likely to have an incredibly biased perspective on a game's design. This is for three separate reasons. Number one, players with a high playtime probably have a large emotional commitment to the game, meaning they're much more likely to defend the game rather than agree with someone tearing it down. A player with a lower playtime is more likely to have an unbiased take on the game, and may identify problems that the older players have grown used to over time. Do a wooden sword. Okay, how do you do wooden sword? Number two, a player with a high playtime could have an incredibly narrow perspective on what game design should be, since they've devoted so much of their time to one single game. For instance, if a player has only ever played Minecraft, they might be unknowingly biased to games with a more direct focus and less freedom, such as point-and-click adventure games or JRPGs. A player with a more diverse playtime in a lot of different games will likely have more awareness of what different games can offer, thus identifying when game developers had the opportunity to do something better. Number 3. High-hour players are often very polarized on issues relating to their game, usually resulting in them disagreeing strongly with other high-hour players. An example of this is the sniper balance debate in TF2, a debate that's seen a wide variety of opinions from several high-hour community figures. In this ongoing discussion, it doesn't seem that playtime affects the opinions in one way or the other, giving credence to the idea that playtime doesn't actually matter at all. This is why I'm willing to listen to someone's opinion on a game, even if they've never played it, as long as they've done their research on it. If they know enough about how the game works, and can convince me of that, they likely have a more unbiased perspective on the game's construction than the average person who actually plays the game. Therefore, their opinion might cause me to look at things differently than I would have if I had only talked to the people I know personally who play the game actively and enjoy it. Okay, so let's say that you're still not convinced. To you, Game Enjoyer 69's opinion is still generally more reliable because of how high his hour count is, especially when compared to a person who doesn't have nearly as many hours. If you are that person, first of all, thank you for hearing me out and getting to this point in the video. I really appreciate it. And secondly, I'd like to ask you a question. How many hours does someone have to have before you can respect their opinion? Feel free to comment your answer below, I'd be interested to hear it. On the internet, I typically find that someone's opinion is more respected, generally, if they say their hour count is at least four figures. That comma really does it for a lot of people, I guess. But what if one person has 1,000 hours and another person has 9,999 hours? Are their opinions of equal value or is the person with more hours more valuable? Well, obviously, the person with more hours is more valuable, duh, but if that's the case, does that apply to any difference of hours? If I have 1,000 hours and someone else has 1,001 hours, do I just have to go boot up the game real quick before I can engage with anything the other person's saying? To some of you, these questions may sound ridiculous and pointless, but they illustrate an important point. Judging a player's opinion by the amount of hours they have is always going to be an absurd discussion, because the number itself is insanely arbitrary. It leads to these weird, silly situations where people compare their hour size instead of directly attacking the argument made by the other person. It's not to say that a player's low experience can't be the reason they have an opinion, but it's not a valid counter-argument to just cite their hour count as a rebuttal to whatever they said and then just move on. You gotta actually, you know, explain why you think they're wrong. Because believe it or not, players with a high playtime can get things wrong. And in fact, they do get things wrong. There are of course numerous notable examples of people like Game Enjoyer 69 over here having bafflingly horrible opinions or just straight up getting things wrong, making it abundantly clear that a player shouldn't necessarily be trusted because of their playtime. Let's start with some examples of community figures with huge hour counts having wildly unsubstantiated opinions. These takes aren't technically falsifiable, but they're not backed by evidence at all. There's several instances of this happening in the TF2 community, but the most notable, and hilarious, example in my opinion was in Uncle Dane's notorious random crits video, and it's actually not related to the video's topic at all. At 19 minutes and 51 seconds, 
Uncle Dane says, Modern era, and I am very confident that five years from now, there will be an entire generation of TF2 players who will cite competitive mode as a reason why they started to play the game in the first place. <laughs> Not only is this quote absolutely hysterical with hindsight, it didn't even make much sense at the time that it was said. The implementation of the Meet Your Match update in the competitive system left a Walmart parking lot to be desired, and even at the time the competitive TF2 scene wasn't big enough or widespread enough to justify this statement. It just goes to show that no matter how high your playtime is, you shouldn't try and predict the future. But the TF2 community isn't the only place where this has happened, of course. There's also the endless amount of hilarity stemming from the opinions of Lethen, a notable competitive player at a multitude of fighting games, all of which he has hundreds, thousands, and even tens of thousands of hours in. Despite this, he's had a multitude of wild opinions, such as when he claimed that Jigglypuff was the best character in Super Smash Bros. Melee, even going as far as to advocate for the character being banned from competitive play. Once again, this was stupid at the time, and it's even more ridiculous now with hindsight. But those are just content creators with bad, uninformed opinions. Surely having a lot of experience would prevent community figures from just getting things outright incorrect, right? Especially when they have the ability to fact check and falsify themselves to ensure that they're accurate as possible before putting out their opinion, R right? Some of you may know that I run a live show every Sunday on this channel called Upon Further Review. Every episode, I get a panel of YouTubers to come on the show and review someone else's video, going over the video's construction as well as the arguments made and talking about what works and what doesn't. But why did I mention this? Well, in doing this show over the past three months, I've learned that YouTubers and community figures get things wrong a lot. Doesn't matter if they've barely played the game. A bad thing, but Overwatch's characters are just more mobile. It doesn't matter if they've played the game a decent amount. That to be as accurate as possible, you need to stand still in a movement shooter. It doesn't matter if they've played the game for thousands of hours. Not even to mention random crits. In a competitive setting, they should never, ever exist. It's just getting a free kill for no reason, basically. Everyone is prone to mistakes. Sometimes it's small things that aren't really consequential, but sometimes it's massive issues that mess up their entire argument. It just goes to show that a person's level of experience doesn't necessarily make them correct all the time or make their arguments more substantial. People make mistakes, and no amount of playtime will ever change that. Growing up, we're often taught that the older you are, the more experience you have, and this intangible experience makes the opinions of an adult more valuable inherently than the opinions of a child. This idea then later extends from age to education. If someone has a degree, then their opinion is generally seen as more valuable than that of someone who's uneducated. In real life, this is often fine. Of course, you should probably trust the trained medical professional with 10 years of accredited experience versus your next door neighbor who insists that 10 gallons of pineapple juice will cure your emphysema. In situations where action needs to be taken, it's best to trust the person with more experience. However, when it comes to debates or arguments, situations where nothing is really at stake, a person's credentials aren't at all relevant to the discussion being had. They may be the reason for why someone believes something, but they should never be used as evidence that a person is correct. A person's opinion should be judged on the merits of their argument. Nothing else matters aside from that. And yet, all too often, a person will cite their experience as a reason for why their opinion is the more correct one, whether it be on social media or in YouTube videos. It's a parlor trick, a cheap way to fool people into automatically accepting whatever is said because the person who said it has the magical trait of experience. All too often, people get platforms in an audience just by having the right credentials and being in the right place at the right time, but we should all work to evaluate what we're told before we believe it to be true. That way we don't end up thinking that Jigglypuff is Melee's best character or that random crits exist in TF2's competitive mode. If we learn to judge the information we're told, both as a society and as individuals. Thank you for watching.